Welcome everyone to another seven wins review draft of AFR. Going to be looking at this draft and we open up a Zalto Fire Giant Duke. Tell me what you think about him and is he good? Because I don't I don't take him here. I go by the philosophy of if I don't know what to do in a situation in Limited, I go by BREAD, which stands for Bombs Removal Evasion Artifacts Dudes. It's an old way to play Limited back in the day. And it's served me well throughout my Magic the Gathering career. And I don't see Zalto as a bomb at all. Instead, I see it as a dude. It's a 7-3 that could easily die and it's 5 mana. If I had haste, I would play it, but it doesn't. So I take the Grim Bounty here, which is the R of the Bomb's Removal. And I take it over the other black cards in the deck, or the pack. Um, Mind Rot is something that I love playing in Limited. You may not like it, it's going to be a playstyle sort of thing. But I like playing one or even two Mind Rots, because when you play a Mind Rot, and you're playing sort of the long game, your opponent's going to have one or two cards left in their hand, and they're most likely going to be spells. They're most likely not going to be holding their lands. Most people don't play around Mind Rot, even if Mind Rot is um, played a lot, people still play their lands. So, play, playing Mind Rot, you're going to get two spells most likely, or two creatures, and then you don't have to deal with them on board. Then they're in top deck mode. Here, uh, you could take Dragon's Fire or a Hulking Bulk, uh, Bugbear. But at this point, I just took a Mind Rot. I'm trying to play Control. And the Bugbear is really good in the aggro deck. But I'm not trying to be the aggro deck. I can already tell with a Grim Bounty and Clutches. I mean, if I want to switch to the aggro deck, it's fine. I can, but even if you are... Even if you are the aggro deck, playing Dragon's Fire is still fine. Wild Mage is insane. I, okay, maybe not insane, but it is a great card. I'm going to take it over uh, Dragon's Fire because it's a bomb. It's definitely a bomb because you play it on turn 4. And then you play pre-combat on turn 5. Your whatever 5 drop you have in your hand. And then that card has haste. And it's just free attack. It also has the possibility of getting more than one, or two, and even three, which is what happened to me in just the previous draft, which I wasn't recording. But they they played a, a when it comes into play, choose gain life or get plus one plus, or plus two plus two, and they gained a bunch of life. Now look at this meteor storm was sent to me three people did not or four people did not pick up meteor storm here that pack one pick one all day <laughs> what did you take instead of meteor storm that card is insane what are you doing passing me meteor storm what so red's open i guess like what are you taking like, hobgoblin captain <laughs> I, I don't know what you're taking over Meteor Storm here because that card is going to blow out so many people. I don't have much to pick in this deck or this pack, so I, I'm considering the Devour Intellect. It's a it's basically Duress, and I don't mind Duress, especially when I have um, a Mind Rot. So I can Duress, see what they kind of have, look what I'm looking for, and man, Meteor Storm is going to be great. I'm not playing blue, so all this is just kind of meh. Unexpected Windfall, I feel as though it's great in the aggro deck, which, again, we're passing. Um, you're kind of getting flooded, and you just need a couple more dudes to fill, refill the board, get some more gas. That's fine. But it could be used as... A draw mechanic and control, but I don't think it's necessary. You're happy enough to play your lands and control, so. Price of loyalty here is pickable, but not until you have your 
sacrifice effects, so don't pick price of loyalty thinking, oh, I'm gonna get get them and get them to sacrifice. I'm gonna two for one them. You can take it, uh, threaten's fine if you're aggressive, but uh, I, I don't really like the fates of removal here. I mean, what am I gonna get back? A brazen dwarf? No. So, immediate sideboard. But I'm gonna take it. You know, what if I get some good cards? Min minimus, minimus containment. This late is kind of ridiculous. I'm gonna take you find some prison. You find some prisoners. Straight target artifacts fine, but geez, I could tame it's really late. I'm not going to play another feign death, so maybe I play it. Really depends on if I get any. Um, of those break it open or whatever. Veteran Dungeoneer this late too. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I'm just passing the white to really signal here. So it's fine. Find a cursed item. I got um, six JHL swords in a previous draft and a bunch of improvised weaponry. And you'd think that'd be good, but it wasn't. <laughs> it just didn't work out. I don't know if it was just variants, but it just didn't didn't work out. It was like six and five, and I had all the removal, like Dragon's Fire as well. But they just played like a, a three mana toughness guy, and I was just like, oh, I can't kill that with my two mana shock. So let me talk about this pick though. <sighs> Loved Ranger is a bomb. It is a wonderful card, and you should first pick it because I'll tell you where to go. However, I have Meteor Storm. It's very difficult to splash the Beloved Ranger, and it hurt very much to pass that. But Chaos Chandler is also a bomb in the colors of red, even in control, or even especially in control, because you're like killing all their things, all your your kill spells. So if the burning guy wasn't there, I don't know. I might have took it there, but I. There's just no splashing that when I'm I got Grim Bounty double black. Meteor Storm triple red. It's just it's not happening. It was tough though. You could always just rare draft it as well. Burning hand's not close. Hoping to wheel one of the two drops. Tiger Tribe Hunter is very good. Yes, into the deck it goes. Except there is a precipitous drop. You have to consider that. <laughs> I mean I just saw that and just slammed it, you know what I mean? But even in this control deck it's still fine to be playing that's like you gotta have a way to kill them and that's a great card to kill kill them with painter's great gives me a uh, treasure for my um jaded cell sword i'm still a little jaded about those cell swords though because i mean i thought i had a sick deck with how many jaded cell swords is too many Apparently six. And you had five or six improvised weaponry. It's like, how can I go wrong with this deck? Oh, just don't draw them together. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. This one, uh, you could take Evolving Wild, you could take Grim Warden, you could take the Skeletons here. I take the Grim, Grim Warden. I have enough end of turn, kill your dude, or attack step, start attacking, kill your dude, block. Ways that Grim Warden might be useful. Blocking for five is really good, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm using him as a blocker, not a aggressive attacker. Blundering Barbarians, a fine pick here. I take it over Hired Hexblade and Fangblade as well here. Which I agree. The Fangblade is good, but... 
I mean, you could make the argument that's death touch and that that's very controlly, but adventuring. Okay, I could see that argument. If you take the Fang Blade here, that's fine. I just wanted to be able to kill artifacts and make a treasure. Another duress. Yeah, I'll just take the deadly dispute, I think. I the Beholder is not something I'm going to play. So, Manticore. But this deck does not need Manticore. I'm going to play Fate's Reser uh, Reversal. When am I going to get back? Brazendorf? No. Alright, Hexblade, happy to wheel. I want it over the Armory Veteran because I don't really have anything to equip it with, first of all. Second of all, so Menace doesn't really do a lot for me. Second of all, maybe it's relevant that the treasure is there and I need to draw a card late game. So, it's fine, Grizzly Bear. Slow down the aggro decks. Seems great. I'm happy with this deck. Pack 2, pick 11. I'm almost complete. You know, maybe I could play a Duress instead. But, Dungeon Map, get in my deck. Yes. Neither of these are playable. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I get a... I have the Beholder last, and I'm not going to play that. I mean, if that, that, or if that card is good in any deck, it would be this one, but... Yeah. Ah, there's not a whole lot in this pack. That's kind of a miss. The only thing that I would consider is maybe even you come to an old camp. Crazy. Or hoarding ogre here. That's just sometimes you miss on packs. I'm happy enough to take what I took though. Already forgot about it. <laughs> that's how that's how forgettable that pack was. I mean, I already have Meteor Storm. I'm gonna win. Can't You can't lose when you have Meteor Storm if you draw it. <laughs> and you can play it. Precipitous Drop here is very good. It's removal. Need a bit more of that. I need some ways to kill them though. So that would be my 23rd card already. I don't really have a way to kill them other than Tiger Tribe Hunter and just Attacking with dorks. I mean, how bad could it be? You just kill everything that they have. So this pick was actually kind of hard for me, I think. Um, I mean, I thought, oh yeah, zombie ogre. All day. Uh, passing the bugbear again is not where I want to be because it's... That's the aggro, I'm not aggro. Uh, there's a Valor Singer as well. I think the the choices are between Valor Singer and Zombie Ogre. But look at that. That entire row is playable except the Earth Cult Elemental. You switch that with a Valor Singer. There's five playables here. And seven. <laughs> the Rust Monster is even playable. If you need a, a three drop. What is Nadar Selfless Paladin doing here? Like, that card's really good. But, I'll just take a ghoul here. Pretty jaded about the self sword still, so... Having six of them and none of them being good and Well, maybe one being good enough. That's a pretty good white hand as well. Moonblessed Cleric. You hear something on watch? Fly. The Dar, Selfless Paladin. That card's really great. What are you doing passing that? I'll just take a two drop though. I have no threatens though, so. I think Valor Singer gets better at, the more you have of them, so that's why I pick the Valor Singer over the skeletons here. We're not really venturing into the, into the dungeon. We do have the dungeon map, but I'm just playing that as a way to kind of do something with my mana later. Because I'll need it. I anticipate that my game's going a bit long. Into turn five, six, seven. Yeah, uh, Plundering Barbarian over Jade's Hellsword all day. I want another way to destroy artifacts 
and make treasure. Easy pick for me. You see, a pair of goblins is not what I'm going to be playing. Two one ones doesn't do anything for me. I'm not going to kill them with one ones, and I'm not aggro enough to warrant plus two plus zero until end of turn for my creatures. As maybe good that it <laughs> improvised weaponry here. Not close. There's a horde of robber. Yes, but yeah, not going to be playing that. So no. You don't take the robber here. So, I was considering the robber here because I was worried about my creature count and my two drops, so... Um, there, I couldn't figure it out quick enough, so I just went with the removal. I'm happy that I went that way, too. Again, Unexpected Windfall is not what I want to be playing. I am worried that I don't have ways to kill him, though. I mean, what am I supposed to do? So, I'm considering... Elemental here, just as a six drop. Uh, six, six. Not because, oh, look, you can sacrifice a permanent and I'm going to get him. No. But three Valor Singers is pretty good, right? Um, I have ways of making artifacts, so play him. I don't remember. Here's something I want to get that out of here. I don't want to play around it. Don't want to play around that either. Not that I'm likely to have to, but sometimes you run into your opponents that you draft with. So, I'm happy with this deck. I just gotta find some cards to cut. Eye the Beholder. Again, if this deck was... Any deck that would play Eyes of the Beholder, it would be this deck, and uh, I don't play it, so... I mean, if you're desperate for removal, sure, but I don't think we are. We could cut one Ghoul, we could cut... Uh... You can you find some prisoners. we don't need that. Meter Swarm's definitely not getting cut. That card's insane. You could cut the Rust Monster, but I just wanted... I wanted a way to deal with the early game Grizzly Bears, and that card seemed really good to block for two ones. And sometimes he can get in, so... Get rid of Eyes of the Beholder. And... Yeah, yeah, I don't want to get rid of Grim Order. I can see you wanting to cut that, though, but I don't think that's the play. Our curve is kind of low as well for being a control deck. It's kind of weird how this is a control deck, and I consider it that. However, the... You know, usually your control deck, it, you're controlling for like Black Dragon or something. I didn't get a Black Dragon, so. You know, 16 lands might not be wrong here. Two more cards. I love the clutches. Don't don't tell me to cut that. <laughs> I love that card, so. Yeah, you can cut a zombie. I, I agree with that. We don't have any ways to really take advantage of the sacking. So. Yeah, I think uh, cutting a land here would be fine. So, cut a mountain, because you don't want to go seven. You do need the double black for Grim Bounty. So, there you go. 